way that the chicken started, I didn't grow up. I mean, I, many people that I talk with, you know, they, they've got stories about growing up with chickens and, you know, dad going out and getting Sunday dinner and, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I grew up in Connecticut. I mean, we, um, the closest I ever got to chicken was a, a drumstick, you know. I mean, it just, it wasn't something that we, um, that we had in our family. Um, but I was writing a, a column for the Telegraph about living thrifty, you know, and, and ways to save money and that kind of stuff. When you've got six kids, it's kind of a way of life, <laughs> you know. You know, you, you find ways to save money everywhere. Um, and so one of my readers uh, in Sandown contacted me and she said, you know, one of the ways that we save money is we have chickens. And I said, well, tell me more. And um, she, I mean, she eats her chickens, so that's one thing, but she gets eggs from her chickens. And I had done a series of articles where I had my children um, weigh the leftover food that they didn't eat each, each, mm -hmm. each meal. And, and so we tallied it up with this big chart going in the you know, living room. And by the end of the month, we ended up throwing out about 20 pounds of, of edible food. I'm not talking about food that went bad, or, I mean food that, that sh could have gone to feed somebody. So that was a lesson. And, um, this woman, Caroline, um, she said, well, we never throw out, or we never waste edible food because all of our edible food goes to the chickens. And I said, well, that's kind of neat. Um, so she said, well, I, um, what she does is she gives fertilized eggs to homeschooling parents and then they, they hatch them, and, which is a great experiment. Everybody loves to do that. The chickens are cute. They're adorable. But what do you do with them? You know they grow up, so she. I mean, so people always hatch these chickens, and then they don't have any, any place to put them. So she said, "I've got um, eight chicks that have just been hatched. You're welcome to have them." And I said, "Oh, well, we don't need eight. We'll just take four. And um, I said, "Make sure they're the girls." Because yeah. <laughs> I had heard about roosters, didn't have too much experience, but I had heard about them. Um, and she said, "Ah ha ha ha, pretty funny." Um, and. Um, I'll get into why she, why she thought it was really funny, but um, so that's how we got our first set of chicks. We got eight little baby chicks, and when you have six children, it's probably the most cost-effective way to entertain them for the summer. Um, so, I mean, it was just a lot of fun. So that's how we started, and then we sort of learned things, and we, we, right now we have uh, 33 chickens. We just lost one this, uh, this winter, which broke my heart. It was, it was Ives, poor little Ives. Um, we have 33 chickens. We have a whole different, we have a variety of different chickens. So um, I'll get into that. Um, I've just agreed to take two chickens from a woman who has six chickens and doesn't doesn't want them anymore. Um, this is what happens. Also, people think that chickens are kind of a fad thing. Um, um, I might take that. I might take her other four ones also and try to rehome them. And then there's a preschool um, in the next town over. They want to hatch chickens. And so they've contacted me and they've asked me if I'll take the chicks. And, you know, I collect children, I collect chickens. Uh, <laughs> we'll stop with C8. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my husband's still there, you know, I'm on the phone, he's like, <laughs> but, um, yeah, be, I, and I said I would take, of course I'll take them, you know, I mean, I'll make sure they go to a good home, even if there's roosters, I've, I've got some contacts that will take the roosters, so, um, you know, it's not that I'm this, you know, halfway house for chickens or anything, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we, and it, the thing is, with that school, they didn't know what to do, and I said, well, you know, there's a thing called exotic chickens, you know, you can order exotic chicken eggs, and so they're paying... $40 to get 10 fertilized eggs. Now, chances are, you, you, I mean, you hatch about 75%, so they're going to hatch out of these 10, maybe maybe six or seven, seven eggs. Now, but they're getting the exotics and the very exotics, so that means that we get some exotics. <laughs> um, it's the springtime at all the feed stores. You're going to see start seeing chick signs and everything. Do you have a tractor supply up here? No. Do you see Lucy? Lucy? Lucy. Lucy. Okay, okay. Well, same, same thing. Um, I had never, have you been, anybody here been in a tractor supply store? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> we have one in our town and I had never ever been in one because I thought it was, you know, a farming store and oh my god, I love it. Um, if you, I mean, if you have 
chicks arriving at these stores, you should go and just see them. I mean, they're just so cute. They have them in big tubs and everything. Great uh, photography opportunities. Um, the way that you can get chicks, there's, there's several ways. One is you can place an order or you can go into the, some of these supply stores and just get them, but usually you have to place an order. In the state of New Hampshire, you're required to buy at least 12 at a time. That's to ensure that kids don't go in with a couple bucks, get a little chick and stick it in their back pocket, you know, and then, and then get tired of it and let it loose in the woods. So um, if you're not sure you want a lot of chickens, you might want to find a friend and go in on them. You know, um, 12 doesn't sound like too much, or maybe it sounds like a lot, I don't know. But um, uh, you have to buy a minimum of 12. You can buy 13, you have 14, 15, whatever. You can buy 27, but you have to buy at least 12 at a time. Um, there's another thing, do you, do you guys have chicken swaps up here? You must. Mm -hmm. You do? You know what a chicken swap mm -hmm. No swapping goes on. It's an old-fashioned term. Um, but they're very, very cool. And if you have the opportunity to go to one, you should go because not only do they have chickens, they have turkeys, they have um, guinea hens, which are some of the strangest looking birds I've ever seen. But, and they're really noisy too. Um, but they eat ticks, which is very nice. Um, they, they also eat these chicken swaps. Very often you'll have home-baked goods, you'll have home, you know, homemade sausage and that kind of stuff. And, and uh, rabbits, which my two young daughters think um, they're selling them for pets. And they're not. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, that's what people do. Mm. All right, so, so you can get chickens at, um, at a feed store in, in uh, piles of 12. You can get them at um, chicken swaps. You can buy one, you can buy two chicks. I mean, they'll sell them in individually. You don't have to buy 12. You can also buy adult hens, um, and that saves you some time if you're interested in um, um, getting, uh, you know, just getting eggs right away. The thing with getting adult hens, and we've gotten some adult hens, um, is that you don't know how they're raised. Um, you know, our chickens are, are pets, and they're very, very friendly. I mean, I've got two that if I go out and if I sit outside, they'll jump into my lap and, and stay there until I stroke them and fall, they'll fall asleep. Yeah, that's Simon and Margot. They're both lovely, lovely chickens. Um, so. You know, I mean, it's, it's up to you. If you want to get up and running, um, if you buy chicks now, your chicks are not going to start laying eggs until <coughs> October, November. Um, and, and it depends on the breed. Um, uh, so, and then the other thing is uh, Craigslist. You can, always add, you can always put an ad on Craigslist and say, hey, I'm looking for some. I've actually got um, one of the things that I do, not only am I a journalist, but I'm a blogger, and I'm working on a, a manuscript for a book, I write about our chickens all the time. And I figured, if I'm going to write about our chickens, I should probably have a New Hampshire red chicken in my flock. So I got my New Hampshire red through Craigslist, because I couldn't find one in any of the stores. Okay, one very important thing you need to know about chickens before you buy them is that boys and girls look exactly the same until they hit puberty. There is only one way to tell them apart. Well, actually, there's two. Uh, there's only one real way, and that is done by the job of a, of a person. It could be a man or a woman, I don't know. But it's um, his, his or her name, her job title name is the chicken sexer. Um, <laughs> yeah, what does your daddy do? <laughs> um, and what, what chicken sexers do is they take the little chick, they turn it upside down, and they squeeze the butt and they look inside the, the little hole there, the vent, and because uh, chickens only have one, um, one hole for excretion, so, so they don't pee and poop, they, they just poop which has pee in it, which is why it's so bloody. Birds do that. So they look inside the hole and if there's a fork in the hole, that means it's a female because the fork is where the egg is going to come down. If it doesn't have a fork, it's the rooster. So I mean, you got to be pretty desperate to figure that out. But that is really the only way. Although, um, thanks to genetics, there are other ways now, and this is, this is why you need to know this. There are things called sex-linked birds. And what these birds are is when they're born, like the, the, the birds that I'm going to be taking are red sex-linked birds. So when they're born, if they're red, if they're completely red, they're female. And they're plucked out, and they're saved, and they're sold. If they're not completely red, they're roosters, and nine times out of ten, the roosters are destroyed because people don't want roosters. Um, so if you if you buy them in bulk, you want to get pullets only because well, if 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 you're if this is what if you want egg layers, you want pullets only. 
because those are the females and they're, <coughs> they've been identified as female. There's not going to be any males in that, in, that, uh, in that batch. If you don't care what you get, if you want some roosters, if you want to you know, sort of gamble, you take a straight run. Straight run is you get what you get. Problem with a straight run is you could get 12 roosters. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about roosters later. <laughs> um, so, so you, you've got, you know, you've got to make up your mind. Um, the other thing is, at some of these feed stores, they sell meat chips. They're meat birds, and they're, they're identified as meat birds. And so I asked the guy. I said, you know, what's the deal? With, I mean, why are these meat birds and these are not meat birds? Well, the ones that are not meat birds are bred to be egg layers. So if you get the sex-linked birds, they're going to give you eggs probably every day and a half um, during the summer, during, you know, in the winter months they slow down a little bit. So they're bred to be egg layers. I've got some exotic birds. They give me an egg whenever they want to. It's not up to me. You know, if they don't feel like it, they're not going to give you an egg. <laughs> um, so, um, so, so that's the egg layers are bred to be to be egg layers. The meat birds are bred to have extra meat on their chest, and they're bred to be slaughtered within a few months after after you get them because they're they're genetically modified. Well, not modified, but they're genetically chosen so that they they grow quickly, they mature quickly, they get that heavy breast meat, and it's actually cruel if you let them live too long because the breast gets too heavy and then they can't hold themselves up. So, so don't make the mistake, and, and I, you know, as soon as I heard that, I was going to try to save them and try to yeah. figure out a sling. You know, <laughs> um, you know, don't think that you're saving these birds by buying them. Um, you know, they're bred to be meat birds. Um, we don't eat any of our chickens. Um, we only eat the eggs. Um, all of our chickens have names. They're all family pets. You know, I understand people eat chickens. Uh, you know, uh, we choose not to, but if you choose to eat your chickens, that's fine. You know, that's fine as long as they're taken care of, you know, before you kill them. No, <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, you know, it's, it's re you know, if, if we, you know, if the nuclear bomb went off tomorrow and we had to, you know, I had to feed my family, you can bet I'll be out in that hand. Yeah. Um, depending on the breed, um, chickens can live from seven to nine years. Wow. They, they will lay eggs between four and five years, again, depending on the breed and depending on how well they're taken care of, um, how well they're fed. Um, and then a lot of people will slaughter the, the chickens after they stop laying eggs. I mean, essentially, they're, they're no good at that point. Um, you can't eat an older chicken. You just have to put them in the crock pot for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, okay, so, so if you get your, your chicks, you bring them home. And the chicks, when you get them, especially in New Hampshire, if you get them now, they're not going to be ready to go outside. They're not going to be ready until five or six weeks after you get them when they're, it's something called they're fully feathered. And they have, you know that cute little down that you see on the Easter egg cards? Yeah. All that has to be gone. They all have to have their pin feathered, they have to have all fully feathered before they can go outside. Um, so what do you do with these chicks? Well, you buy a giant, oh, oh, you have a question? Um, do chickens get sick from other chickens? They sure do. They sure do. Um, well, I'll, I'll address that now. If you, if we bought, bought a, a different chick, well, not so much the chicks, because the chickens, the chicks are vaccinated and inoculated, so they're pretty clean. But if I brought home another adult bird from somebody else's flock, I have to keep her in isolation for about two weeks to make sure that she doesn't have a cold or a flu or anything like that, because birds can have, they can bring diseases. That's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, okay, so you get your chickens. Um, you don't need anything fancy for them. You need a big Tupperware tub like this. And we've had uh, 12 chicks at a time in a Tupperware tub. Um, you, it's up to you what you put on the, on the bottom. You can put, um, we use large uh, wood chips. You don't want to get the really fine wood chips because they're little chicks and they're hungry. And they're going to try to eat it and then the wood will expand in their stomachs and they, and they can die. Um, so you want to get the larger wood chips. You get a feeder, which you get at the feed store, um, and it, it's just one of those canisters. You fill it up with food, and then you turn it upside down. 
Um, and you're going to get um, a waterer, which is the same thing. Um, they're messy. They're going to get the food all over the place. They're going to get the water all over the place. But when they're really little, this is the neat thing about really little chicks. Really little chicks have really little poop. So it does, they don't smell. And it's not, I mean, you can go a couple days between changing them. As they get older, however, everything gets bigger and everything gets smellier. So um, at some point, especially if you have these chicks in your house, which is what we do, um, your house is going to start smelling like old McDonald's farm. You've got to change the bedding like every day. Um, so, so that's kind of fun too. Um, but that's, what, that's one of the reasons we have six kids, because they do that. <laughs> And I'm not going to. Um, now, the thing is, um, also you have to keep them warm. Um, people get a little confused with this because it doesn't mean they have to be in a sauna. It doesn't mean that they have to be in a really warm spot. What you have to do is put a 100-watt light bulb, you know, and, and usually you can get, you should get a protection, you know, it's, it's like a, a little med, metal cover and it, it, you know, it keeps the, the bulb inside of a, a wire sort of mesh thing. Um, and that's just to protect the chicks so that they don't, you know, lean against it or, or something like that. And the chicks, what they'll do is they'll come over, and if they're cold, they'll get warm, but then they'll go away. And you have to give them enough coolness so that they can cool down if they get overheated. So you don't want sort of this massive sun lamp, you know, on top of every place. You have to, to give them an area to leave. Yeah? Um, I noticed there were two different types of brood lamps. There's the clear and the infrared. Is there a difference? I mean, there are reasons for one and the other? Um, um, the, the, when you're talking about brooder lamps, that's a little bit different than I'm talking about a heating lamp. But a brooder lamp, and I'll answer the questions as they come. Um, in the winter time, um, egg production goes down as a result of sunlight. So you can buy a brooder lamp, which uh, essentially mimics um, sunlight, and stick it in your coop and put it on a timer. So when the sun goes down, you can add another three, four, five hours of sunlight. And you can force egg production this way. You know, we, we don't do that also. Um, just because I, you know, we're, we're not a business. So, you know, if we go down three or four eggs a day, I mean, that's, that's really okay with us. Um, if, if eggs are part of your business and, and that kind of stuff, um, you know, that's why you would use a brooder, a brooder light as opposed to a heating light. Um, the other thing, though, if you're going to do that is you're going to wear that chicken out a little faster. Um, because um, naturally, they're following the natural cycle of you know doing less in the in the winter time, and so if you want to do that, that's fine. But you're probably going to get um, less egg production out overall through the lifespan of your chicken if you do that. And infrared, um, I think it's just a fancy. You know, I, I, I don't. I, I really don't know enough about that because we don't use that. Yeah. I was told. When, excuse me. When I started my chickens. Um, a friend of mine used the red, and she said because the, the babies have a tendency to peck each other, and if it's red, if the light is red, they don't, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't notice the blood on the chicken and causing them to peck more. I've never heard that. I don't know what the <laughs> truth is, but, but my friend raised tons of chickens, and she always used the red light. I don't, and I've never had a pecking problem. And that's the red light at night? Uh, when, their heat lamp, for their heat. For their heat lamp. Yeah. I don't know, though, if, yeah. it's, if there's any truth to that. Yeah, 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 go ahead. And the red light at night is so they can sleep. The red doesn't bother their night sleep. But you know what? They sleep with their eyes closed. I know, but still there's a light there. Yeah. And it will provide heat. That's oh, but, yeah, okay, so you're talking about heat, though. I no, see heat it. from the red light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Light so, so that's, I see, so that's, maybe that's it. So, so it, maybe you're talking about an infrared heating lamp. I'll tell you, we live, I mean, granted I'm two, hour, two whole hours um, <laughs> south, but, um, you know, chickens are after birds. They're like, you must have turkeys up here. We've got, do you have wild turkeys up here? Yeah. We've got tons of turkeys. Turkeys are just like chickens. They, they have their own down coats. They really don't need a lot of heat. They don't need any heat, actually. As long as they're in an enclosed uh, area that, that, sh that shelters them from the wind, they don't need heat in the wintertime. Now we feel sorry for our chickens. Yeah. So so um, when it goes below zero, we'll put a lamp in the hen house in one corner. So we don't use any. People are going to try to sell you lot. Chickens are very trendy right now. They're going to try to sell you lots and lots of stuff for your chickens. Remember the colonists. They all had chickens, and they didn't have a lot of fancy stuff. 
You know, chickens are pretty hardy birds. That's why they're still around. So we put, um, I think it's a 100 watt bulb again. I mean, that's a lot, and, it, and it's in the little, the little thing, the metal thing, so it does collect the heat and it focuses it down. And the same thing, if they get really cold, they'll go over to the lamp, but you know what, I've never seen any chicken under that lamp. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that chickens do, which is why you can't just have one or two chickens, you know, chickens, uh, birds of a feather flock together, is they roost. And in the winter time, they'll roost really close to each other. And I've put my hand in between two birds, and you can't, uh, you can't believe the heat that's in between these two birds. So they, yeah, I mean, they know how to stay warm. You know, if, if they're caught out, um, I read a book um, a couple years ago, it was called The Children's Blizzard. Did anybody read that one? It's about the snowstorm that came down on the plains, like, within a few minutes. Oh, it was, it was a fascinating book. I thought, my kids don't go outside without mittens now because of this book. Um, but, I mean, it, this, the, the temperature dropped and the snow came down and birds actually froze on the branches. I mean, okay, then you might need some heat. But, you know, in New Hampshire, Although the last couple of winters have been pretty cold, but you know, below zero, if they have enough heat in there, it's not going to be an issue. Um, another thing that we do, and it's a little out of order, but that's okay. Another thing we do for our chickens in the winter time is we put um, uh, wood chips, and we don't muck it out in the winter. So we just keep putting more and more and more. So there's this this really right now it's about this thick insulation on the floor. So they can sort of, you know, they'll bury down sort of if they want to stay warm. Um, the other thing is because we don't muck it out, you've got a little bit of compost going on there with their poop and the chips, and that's generating a little bit of heat. So, um, so it's, you know, there's ways that you can, you don't have to buy fancy stuff. You just have to be a little clever about it. Um, the, the, the downside to all of that, and maybe the upside to the lamp, is that, um, in about two weeks, we're going to have one heck of a mucking job. You know, we got to figure out what to do with all that stuff. But, um, but compost—that's exactly what we do. Um, all right. So, so you've got your chicks. Oh, and the other thing is, when chicks are little, you give them medicated mash. That's what it's called, and it looks like it's it's ground up. It's it's not. You can't see big chunks or anything. It, it almost looks like a powder, sort of. It's a little bit grainier than a powder. But that's pretty much the only time you give them medicated food, but it's important for the chicks to have medicated mash. Um, the reason for this is that the chicks, um, especially if you get them from a feed store or something, they're actually hatched, um, they're, they're shipped. I mean, they're shipped through the US mail, which I think is just fascinating. But um, they're shipped within a day of birth. So some of them will be sick. Some of them will have deformities, which is why the general rule of thumb is that when you buy a batch of chicks, you're going to lose about 25%. Now, that's what they say. That's not what we have discovered. Because we bought, last spring, we bought 24 chicks. And I figured, oh, okay, well, we'll have, you know, 19 when we're all done. We ended up having 23 chicks. <laughs> So, I mean, we lost one chick, and um, it was devastating. My daughters cried for days. Um, and we actually had one chick that, that showed the same symptoms. They can get a respiratory um, illness, and that's what this little chick had. I mean, I, I have, I've got um, some medical background, and, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to get her to drink the water. And, mm. and she, you know, she, she was too much. But then the, the, the second one, when the second one got, got sick, um, I just kept putting little bits of the medicated mash on my finger, you know, and, and offering it to the bird and getting it wet and everything, because I figured if she could just get a little medicine in her, just a little, you know, it might help. And she actually pulled through. So, um, you know, some people might not do that. You know, some people might not skip sleep just to take care of a sick little chick. But you know, that's that's you know one of the things that we do. Um, so they have medicated mash, which um, they'll go through mostly because um, you've heard about um, hand scratching. You know, there's, there's a reason for that. I mean, what they do is they, they pull up everything with their feet and then they, they peck it. Um, okay, so you keep them in their house. They're going to go beep, 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 oh, I mean, it's, it's actually kind of fun um, until it drives you crazy, but um, it, is, it is kind of fun. Um, at about five weeks, and this is not the first time they, you know, I mean, before this, you can take them outside and let them play or exercise, you know, on the grass while you your kids are watching them or whatever. Um, so they don't have to be in the Tupperware container, but when they're about five weeks old, they're about this tall. 
And um, that's when it's time to put them outside. Now, when you put them outside, they have to be, especially in New Hampshire, they have to be in some place that's safe. We've got, in our neighborhood, we've got um, an occasional bear, we have an occasional coyote, we have a fisher cat that lives in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, we have um, dogs uh, who are unleashed, um, mm -hmm. we have cats who are unleashed, and we have this kid up the street. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have to keep them safe from the predators. Um, so what I did is I gave some books, I don't think I have the one with me, um, I, I went out and I bought some books on chicken houses and I gave the uh, job to my then 16 year old son and I said pick out a chicken house that we're going to make for our chickens. And so he looked through this book and one example was an old refrigerator that somebody had put in the backyard and turned into a chicken house. And he said, Mom, let's do this. And I said, well... <laughs> where are we going to get the refrigerator? <laughs> he said, oh. So then he went back, and he came back with, um, huh? We go one right along the street now. Oh, did you? Well, <laughs> it was sublime. Okay. But, but then he, he went through the book, and, and he said, well, here's another one. And it was the cab to a truck that somebody had turned. And I was like, what book are you looking at? You know? <laughs> So then I said, okay, you know, that's it. Yeah, I mean, one more try uh, there, Griffin. Um, and so he looked through the book one more time, and he said, well, here, we can make an igloo out of hay, uh, hay bales, you know, and that will keep them warm and everything. And I said, well, that's pretty clever, but how are you going to get the eggs? And he said, oh. <laughs> and that's when I realized that my son was actually smarter than I was because he figured out that if he kept giving me these ridiculous solutions, I was going to take the book from him and say, oh, I'll just do it myself, <laughs> which is exactly what I did. <laughs> I went on Craigslist, and um, actually I told my husband to go on Craigslist, and um, we found a guy who had an ad on Craigslist who made hen houses, and so I figured, you know, if I'm going to be writing about these birds, um, it would be a really, really short book if they all died. So um, we contacted this guy, and it turns out he lives uh, probably you know, a mile and a half away from me. Um, his name's Tom, and um, I have some cards up here. Anybody's interested um, in, in hen houses or just finding it. He's got, at the very least, uh, I can pass this one. At the very least, go to his website and look at the different types of houses that he has available. Um, he is a firefighter down in Boston, um, and just the nicest guy in the world. Um, so he came over and he built our hen house for us. We have um, an enclosed, it's an enclosed building that, I mean, he's a construction worker, so, I mean, this is a house. It is a, a solid house. You can go inside of it. It's got, you know, the two by fours and all this kind of stuff. Um, so, so this is where they sleep at night, and then they go out into a fully enclosed pen area with a roof. So that's what we have. Um, we got that the first year. The second year I had him back putting an addition on our hen house. Now our dishwasher is still broken, but our hens have an addition on their hen house. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. Yeah. Yeah. How big of a pen outside the pen area do you have? What, 33 chickens? Um, we do have 33 chickens. It's, it's kind of odd. Um, it's about probably... Um, 12 by 15, I mean, but it, but it goes around a corner like that. Um, the thing is, some of our chickens are very small because we have something called ceramuses, which are about the size of a pigeon. So, I mean, it's not so much the ground. Um, you have to have lots, lots of roosts, you know, so you have to have sticks everywhere. So, so all of your chickens are not going to be on the ground at all times. So, but if you go to, if you go to this guy's website, um, he's got suggestions for, for the the, the yardage of, for chickens. Um, the other thing, though, is that in the summertime, we actually um, open the hen house door, and the the older ones, the ones that we actually, you know, uh, grew from little chicks and we played with them, the ones that are the most tame, they'll follow us single file, just like Ping the Duck or you know, Make Way for Ducklings, and they'll go into the dog area, which is an enclosed, penned-in area with a six-foot fence. Yeah. Um. Do, do, the, do the chickens get along? 
They do. do. They do. They do. Um, but with the, what happens if you bring a new bird into the flock, they're, you've heard the term pecking order, and that's what they do, and that's probably the pecking. They'll peck because that's the way to establish dominance. So they'll, you know, so that poor chick, and you'll think they're attacking the chick, and you'll want to save that, or not the chick, but the, the bird or whatever. Um, but they have to do it. You have to let them establish the pecking order, um, and um, eventually they'll settle down. But they do. I mean, we've brought different birds in, and we haven't had a problem. Um, I have heard of some problems where pecking is an issue, continued pecking. Um, what, an interesting thing is our oldest, biggest bird, her name is Zelda, um, she, um, when we got rid of our roosters, she became the alpha in, in the flock. Um, and my grandmother uh, used to tell the story of uh, a hen that she swore turned into a rooster. And, it's, and she believed that. I mean, she absolutely believed that. And the reason that she believed it now, I can, I, I, you know, it's not that she's you know, crazy, but um, uh, when, when there's no rooster around, the instinctive behavior comes over and, and somebody steps up to the plate. So the biggest, baddest bird will be, she'll be the alpha. And if she, um, it's possible for her to behave so, you know, her, that she'll start throwing off testosterone. And so she'll start, um, you know, developing more of a waddle. You know, she, she might even crow. Um, and if she gets to that point, she'll stop laying eggs. Which is, yeah. which is why my grandmother probably believed, you know, that, that this was a rooster. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's just fascinating, the things that we have learned about chickens. I mean, it's just, I, I just can't get over it. We have so much fun with these All right, so, so you get a hen house and you want plenty of, um, the big thing is roosting space. So you want bars. You know, you don't have to get, you know, very expensive bars. You can get broom handles. You know, you just have to make sure they're secure. But um, they'll roost. They don't stay on the ground at night. Their behavior is to get up into the trees, away from all the predators. So you make sure that you have enough roost. Oh, yeah. Nest boxes. Everybody will tell you, you know, for every three birds you, you have, you need one nest box. Well, you know, I've had a couple babies. I've had six babies. And so I figured, well... <laughs> I know what they're going through, so each of my birds is going to have their own nesting box, a little bit of privacy, maybe some curtains, uh, <laughs> nice picture to focus on. Um, you know what, we've got 33 birds and we have three nesting boxes, and what happens if, if they need to lay an egg and somebody's in the nesting box, they'll either wait their turn or they'll drop it on the, in the corner. You know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, birds have lived for centuries and millions of years without nesting boxes. So you, you should have, you know, if you, we have four, which is good. There's one, one of the boxes I have never, ever found an egg in. Never. But three, you know, so we use three for 33 birds. So, so if you're going to talk to somebody about getting a hen house, just don't let them talk you into getting dozens of nesting boxes, because they really aren't necessary. Um, and when our chickens are in our penned-in dog area, they actually go to the corner where sand is, and that's where they lay all their eggs. Mm -hmm. um, and when your chickens are outside, there's something called horse buckets, which are um, black buckets, and they're, they're flat on one side, so they, they can lie against a wall. And what I did is I got a bunch of those, and I just put them on the ground, and sometimes they use those too. So, you know, again, you don't need to spend a lot of money. Did you put anything in those buckets? Oh, yeah, and they kick it out. Oh. Yeah, I know. I have little quills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're chickens. <laughs> so, predators. Um, let me talk a little bit about hawks, because we have a lot of hawks in New Hampshire. And since we've gotten our chickens, we have a lot of hawks in our neighborhood. Oh. Um, the birds instinctively, if there's a shadow that goes over them, they will run for cover. So if they're going to be outdoors, they need to have access to some sort of cover because they're going to they're going to freak out and they're gonna, they're, doing, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. So you need to have an overhang or something that they can hide under because that's what they'll do. Um, 
in some of these magazines, I've seen you can actually buy aprons for your chickens. Um, there's two reasons for this. One um, is because the, the rooster will mount, the way that they, the way that they do the nasty deed is they, they mount the bird. So they, they get on top of the bird. Now they've got talons. And so you can tell which are the most desirable females because they have no feathers on their backs. Um, so you can get aprons to cover the, the birds because um, if they have no feathers and if somebody's mounting them, they will get um, bloodied skin and you can get infections. So I mean, it's not you know just an aesthetic thing or you know it's one way to protect your chicken. The other thing that I've seen are camouflage aprons, and I think they're supposed to camouflage your chicken from the hawks that fly mm -hmm. overhead. I think you're a fool if you buy those, because I think <laughs> hawks are a little smarter than that. <laughs> so, so don't buy the camouflage aprons for your, for your birds. Okay, once the little chicks go out to the hen house, um, that's when you start giving them something called crumbles. Yeah, yeah, another question. How do you take care of the baby chick that has a broken leg? Very, very carefully. Um, you know, I actually read an article about a, a chicken that had a broken leg. Um, her name was Tiffany, and um, they, the owners, she broke her leg, so the owners took her to a vet. Um, she had to have surgery. She had to have a cast. She had to have a sling. She had to have physical therapy. Um, and um, surprisingly, after about $2,300 worth of vet bill, she was fine. <laughs> So it can be done. It can be done, but it takes a lot of work. And I'll tell you, um, one second. Um, if your bird gets injured, I mean, obviously you're going to do what you can. You're going to put salve on it if it's got open skin. You're going to try to save it. Chicks cost about two dollars and sixty-three cents, and that's an expensive one. You know, you got to you got to do what you got to do. I know um, Tom, the the guy with the uh, the the uh, hen houses. He um, actually had surgery on his duck's foot. His duck was born with sort of a club lame foot, and his wife made him take it to the vet and had surgery. And the, the long story short, the duck is alive, still walks like this, no change, yeah. but I mean, he gets around. Um, they, they adapt. They adapt. You know, the thing is, though, they have to be careful because you obviously can't get away. One second, let me get her first. Yeah. Um, what does it mean, like, the color of the eggs? Oh. I'm going to get to that. Because my chickens look like they green eggs. And ham, yeah. yay! <laughs> um, I'll talk about eggs in just a second, okay? Because I actually I, I brought some different eggs. So um, so uh, that's a, that's an excellent question. Yeah. Who had the question? Yes. Uh, it's not a question, just a comment. I have a, a bird with a bird. You do? And I it. And uh, he's three years old now. He was a baby when I did it. And he, the kids call him gangster because he walks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of a bird is it? It's a uh, silky. Oh, okay. Oh, <coughs> love silkies. Mm -hmm. Love them. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right. Um, okay. So, so we've gotten to the crumbles for the birds. Um, and once they're outside, the first couple of, of days and nights they're outside, you're going to go out and check on them, just like parents do with newborn babies, you know, are they still breathing? Mm -hmm. um, some of my friends actually put up monitors to watch the food. You don't have to do that. They're going to be just fine. Um, and, and basically, once, once they're out in the hen house, then what you have to do is you have to make sure they have food and water at all times. Mm -hmm. And that's really the care for these birds. Mm -hmm. Now, we actually lock our birds in at night um, because even though the yard is, is enclosed, um, with that fisher cat or the bear, mm -hmm. if they really want our chickens, uh, chicken wire is not going to keep them out. So we lock them inside. Which means in the morning we have to let them let them out, um, and but and you know <coughs> other than food and water, that's, that's it. I mean, we, chickens are very very easy to take care of. Um, all right, so um, one of the things you need to do is go out and collect the eggs. Now remember, if you get chicks now, you're not going to get eggs until October, November. Um, uh, the different colored eggs, and I will pass these around, and the different sizes are dependent on the breed. So you have a green egg because you probably...
um, an Easter egg. Is, do, you, do you know what breed you have? No, I know, you know, I know we have like one type of breed now. We have a silky. You have a silky? Yeah. What? So you must have different kinds of eggs. Yeah, we have, we have, we have light horns and that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have like a smaller one. Yeah, yeah. See, so we now these, this, this big one. Oh, that's supposed to be clean. Um, this one is one of the the sex linked ones, which is is red to lay eggs, and I'll pass these around. Um, so this is a larger one because that's what she does, you know. And when they first start laying eggs, <laughs> um, um, when they start laying eggs, yeah, um, they've got to get into the routine. So the, the initial eggs are smaller. Um, and much to my four teenage boys' delight, the very first egg is sometimes about this big and it's called a fart egg. <laughs> <laughs> they had a great time with that, those boys did. Um, so, and we've actually found one of those eggs. And it was just so adorable. We, we just, you know, we didn't want to uh, even open it for the yolk. Mm -hmm. But now, so the, this is more of a standard size egg for, for our, our birds. Now, we also have these rose eggs. And this is by, um, let me see, who's doing this one? I think, oh yeah, we have, we have three, one is a frizzle. Um, and they're three sisters, and so these are the, th we, they were black, so we call them the three witches from Macbeth. <laughs> um, this is, oh, this is sort of the green one. This is Zelda. So this is, Zelda's our only green layer, and so I know that this, I know she's still, she's the alpha one, remember? So I know she's still lying. So that's, that's, and she's an Easter egger, which is not a recognized breed, but it's, it's like a, it's a mutt that's bred so that you get these, these, um, these green eggs. Um, this, um, these white ones are from uh, Simon and Garfunkel, which are <laughs> our Appenzeller Spitzhalbins. Mm -hmm. um, a couple years ago, I wouldn't have even know what that was. Um, and then we have some other ones in here, so I'll pass them around. Um, these are raw eggs, so don't drop them. <laughs> eggs are laid, and I've actually been able to see an egg come out, which is so amazing. Um, about half of us have been able to see it. It's been the holy grail to, you know, to see these eggs actually pop out. Um, what happens is the, 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 the hen, it's not a chick at this point, the hen will sort of turn around and it's like an anti-magic trick. You know, instead of here you see it, now you don't, it's like here you don't see it, now you do. It just, you know, it's, they don't sort of like push it out. It just goes wow. and all of a sudden it's there. And if you're there when they lay the very, I mean, the second they lay it, it's shiny and it's wet. And that's because it's covered with an oil. Now, if you take that egg and you put it on your kitchen table, one second, okay, let me finish this. Um, if you put it on your kitchen table, it's in suspended animation. That's what that oil does. And you don't need to refrigerate it at that point. If that's a fertilized egg, you can take it, it can sit on your table for two weeks, you can take it, put it in the nest of a brooding hen, and it will it will uh, generate because it's it, or it'll it'll start hatching. Wow. Um, and think about it. See, this is this is one of the things that I thought was fascinating. Um, a, a hen lays an egg about every day and a half. So she lays an egg, and then she goes off and she does her stuff, and she comes back and she lays an egg again, and she goes off and she does her stuff, and she does this until she has about ten or twelve eggs, right? Now, think about all the stories you read when you were little about chickens on the farm. I mean, the, the chicks are all the same size, right? Mm -hmm. But they should be an age difference. Mm -hmm. What happens is because they're covered with that oil, they don't start the hatching process until the mother has felt, she feels that there's enough eggs there, and then she starts brooding, and that takes the oil off, and they all start at the same time. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> So the other thing, though, is that if you get a lot of eggs, you don't need to refrigerate them until you clean them, which is very nice. It's you know, so I mean, I wouldn't leave them in a hot car or anything like that. But I mean, if they're if they're in room temperature in a house, you know, that's fine. So you know, I mean, think of all the the pioneer where they had the basket of eggs and everything. I mean, that's that's what they did. If you don't wash that oil off, they're going to be fine. They're yeah. not going to. So you have 33 chickens. How many eggs do you get a week? 
Um, production is, is starting to increase because of the sun, so we're getting, um, instead of a week, I'll go daily, um, we get between 12 and 15 eggs a day. Yeah, we've learned to like omelets. <laughs> a lot. You, she had a question. <coughs> Did you have another question? Um, one of my chickens were the biggest eggs that couldn't even fit in the egg carton. Really? We've had a couple of those also. Uh, we, they have to go in the corner so that they don't. Isn't that amazing when they have the big ones like that? What kind of a chicken do you have? Do you know? Um, it's either a Rhode Island, they're either Rhode Island or New Hampshire beds. Okay. So those, those are the hardy ones. Yeah. yeah. And they, so my daughter, my eldest daughter brought a dozen to the, to the Rochester Fair this year and one best of show with the oh. eggs. Oh, no kidding! For backyard chickens. Oh, and that's then great. we had two chickens. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so it took, it took a week to get those dozen eggs, huh? <laughs> wow. Um, and w that's another thing, when you're deciding on the breed, there's some really exotic breeds. Um, look at the combs. There's, there's, I think, eight different types of combs that are identified by the American Poultry Association. Um, some of them are really, you know, big and fancy and all that kind of stuff, which is fine, but in the northern states, um, those, the, the larger combs will get frostbite, and those, they'll fall off, you know. Which, you know, it's kind of like a, a lizard's tail. I mean, the, the, the chicken won't die. But you, you know, just keep that in mind if you're going to have sort of, you know, outdoor birds and all. All right. So those are the eggs. Let's talk about roosters. Neighbors don't like roosters. <laughs> That's the first thing you need to know about roosters. The second thing you need to know about roosters is that roosters crow to alert the flock, which means they. You know, in all the cartoons, they crow at the crack of dawn. I mean, they might think that the sun is attacking them. But the reason that they crow is they see a dog. They're alerting the flirt. That's their, uh, the, the flock. They're alerting the flock. They see a cat. They see, a, you know. So it's danger. Now, the thing with roosters is they don't really sleep very heavy. And so if they hear something outdoors in the woods, next to the hen house where you built the hen house in the woods to keep it away from, you know, the people, they're going to crow. And they don't just go, Arr! they go, Arr! Arr! 10 minutes later, Arr! you know. <laughs> and so the first, the first, we didn't want roosters, but the thing is you can't tell a, a chicken, and uh, all chickens, boys and girls are called chickens. Girl chickens are called pullets, and then they become hens. Boy chickens are called cockerels, and then they become roosters, or cocks. Again, my, my four teenage boys love that one. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so the thing is, what you try to do, especially if you're invested in these chickens, is you try to convince yourself that this bird who has larger feet than the other ones is just, you know, that's okay because my sister has big feet. And when they start getting the waddle, you think, that's okay because my grandmother has a waddle. <laughs> and then when they start, you know, going, because they, they, they don't just crow on day one, they sort of work up to it slowly. And you're like, well, that's okay, they're just a little unhappy. You know, and then one day you're going to wake up and you're going to hear the, and you're going to go, so our first rooster, whose name is Betty, um, and the reason her name was Betty is because we kept saying, you know, I bet he's a rooster. I bet he's a rooster. And Betty was a rooster. <laughs> so, so, um, so Betty, um, we, you know, we loved Betty. I mean, we, she, she was one of our sweetest little, she, I still call her she. Um, one of our sweetest little um, hens, and so we wanted to try to save her, and so. Again, this is another case where other people are smarter than I am, because she would crow in the middle of the night, and I would run downstairs and run out to the hen house and go, shh, <laughs> didn't work. So, so I'd go back up to bed, and she'd start crowing again, so I'd go, I'd say, oh, I know, I'll get some bread, because if she's eating, she's not going to be crowing. So, she had, you know, you, you've read about Pavlov's dogs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in the middle of the night, you know, several times during the night, I'm running out there with a piece of bread, and then one of the days it dawned on me that, that you know, she had me pretty trained. Yeah. And I, she she kind of knew what she was doing there. 
So, so the day came. Um, we were going to try. I mean, we tried everything. We tried bribing our neighbors. We tried, you know, covering the hen house. We tried. When I started hearing our neighbors, you know, shotgun first thing in the morning, that's when I said, okay, we got to do something about this. So, um, Carolyn, thankfully, Carolyn, who gave us the chicks, this was one of the original eight ones. She took uh, Betty back. Um, so, and the thing is, she had a bunch of roosters, and so she kind of used them for Sunday dinner. Um, which is fine, you know, as long as, you know, she's, she's very ethical about it. So, so that was Betty, and then we found out that another one of ours, um, Courier, whom we had gotten, is one of our exotic ones. Um, Courier was a rooster also. Now, Courier, there's, there's three sizes of chickens. There's a giant, which is about 12 to 15 pounds, and they eat a lot, but they give you very big eggs, and they've got a lot of meat on them. There are standards. And then there's something called bantams. Bantams are the little, the little puppies that you carry around in the purses. Um, so Courier was a, a bantam, and um, she was a mille de fleur, um, came from France. Or she, did, she didn't come from France, but her breed did. Um, and so we figured, she's this big. How much noise can she make? Hmm. Well, OK, we found her a home. <laughs> <laughs> so, so and then I went to. Um, I went to a, a chicken swap last spring, and I was talking to a chicken breeder, and I was telling her about, you know, we don't want, you know, we don't want roosters, we don't want roosters, and she had some um, little ceramic uh, mixed chips, and ceramics are really tiny birds, and so she um, she said, oh well, this one is a girl, I can tell because I do this all the time, and this one's a girl, and this one's a girl, and I said, okay, fine, so I'll take those. Well, one of them turned out to be a boy. And that one's name, because we knew it was a girl, and we'd gotten it as a chick. It was my daughter's birthday present. His name was Princess Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually drove an hour and a half north to, to give Princess Tiny to a, a family that had a farm that, that, that wanted her and him. Um, so, um, and it's crazy, and they actually, they thought the name was so funny that his name continues to this day to be Princess Tiny. <laughs> um, so, so the thing is, if you have roosters, if you have a lot of property, go for it. You know, roosters are how you get baby chickens. If you don't have a lot of, of property, or if you have neighbors that are a little on the grouchy side, stay away from the roosters. I mean, they're just, they're just going to be. The other thing is, everybody who grew up with chickens has a nasty rooster story. And they do. They get nasty as they get older. And um, one of the deciding factors for Betty was she started attacking my son, and he actually got a little infection because she pecked him. And then it got, it got uh, a little sore, and I thought, she pecked him. That's, that's kind of interesting. Um, so, so that's... that's um, the roosters. You want to stay away. So that's basically um, how you take care of the, the chickens, from, from getting them to the chicks, to putting them outside, and then to, um, to adulthood. Now, the other thing is when, when they're adults, you can give them kitchen scraps. In fact, you should give them kitchen scraps. Stay away from garlic and onion, because if you give them too much of that, the eggs, and it, it would be lovely if we had garlic eggs, wouldn't it? But it doesn't work that way. They taste skunky. So you want to, you want to stay away from those things. Um, but everything else, and you want to stay away from meat. You don't give them meat, and you don't give them obvious egg. So if you have a scrambled egg that's left over, you don't give it to them. Um, once in a while, you'll get um, a, a chicken that will um, attack the eggs, that will eat the eggs. Um, that's a very hard habit to break. Um, and what you, the way that you break it is you remove the eggs as soon as possible so that she doesn't have anything to do uh, to attack. Um, another thing is you remove the eggs and you leave in marble eggs so that if she pecks it, she'll, she'll get some feedback that it's not, it's not you know, kind of doesn't hurt, but it's going to give her some feedback. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is if you cannot break the habit, that chicken has to be removed from the flock because they will um, get the eggs. If you have a broken egg, and eggs happen, I mean, broken eggs happen, um, you have to remove it as quickly as possible because they will eat it. They think it's food. It's shiny. Um, and so you just have to sort of do that kind of maintenance. Um, this past winter, we did have a shellless egg, which I thought was... I, I wrote about it on my blog, and I, actually I've had some cards too. Um, it was the coolest thing. It, was, it looked like it was um, inside of a, a doctor's glove. 
you know, that kind of material. You didn't have any hard, I mean, it, it, you could roll it in your hand and everything. Um, and of course, I freaked out. I was like, oh my god, um, you know, the zombies have taken over my chickens. Um, it was, um, it's, it, you know, it's like one of those things that happens. You know, unless the bird is laying shellless eggs all the time, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, I mean, they're they're putting out an egg every other day. You're gonna get some weird. You do have some that have double yolks, yeah. Do you use oyster shells to help harden the eggs? Yes, we do. That was my next thing. When they start laying eggs, you have to start um, including oyster shell into their to their meal. Um, it's the cheapest way to do it, and it's one of the best ways. I mean, we live on the coast, and you know, it's not going to cost you much. So, a five-pound bag of oyster shell, you can mix it into 50 pounds of feed, and that's good enough. But the thing is, when you get the egg, calcium deposits on the eggs like lumps, mm -hmm. and again, that happens. But if that happens often, and if you start seeing a trend, you pull back on the on the calcium, on the uh, oyster shell, on the calcium, because they're getting too much calcium. If you see thin, sh thin spots on your shells, or if you see, um, uh, or if they if they're too thin and they crack, you have to put in more. You know, so it's it's a fluid thing. It's never you know never the same. Um, you'll get variations like this one. I don't know if you noticed. This one has two different colors on it. That's perfectly normal. You'll get polka dot ones. Those are normal too. Um, the, the thing with the um, the shellless egg, it was just um, you know we only we've had two actually, um, but it, it happens and you know it's pretty amazing actually. Just the membranes around it. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Now the thing with eggs is also um, you can get um, we have not had this, but eggs eggs can get very large as you as you know, and. Um, the way that they, and I, I did this in a school and I actually drew it on the board and then I forgot to erase it. So the next day in the school, the teacher is probably saying, what is this, this uh, uterus on, the, on my wall here? <laughs> but, but what happens is the egg starts up here. If you imagine a tube, okay, the egg, you know, the, the yolk starts up here and it travels down. As it travels down the tube, it gets covered with calcium and it gets built up and then it moves on down here. Well, it doesn't wait till it's out before it starts sending the other one down. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an automated process. So sometimes this egg will get stuck in here while this one comes down, and then another shell will be put on top of it. So it's possible to have an egg within an egg. And I've actually seen, um, an, I haven't seen it in person, but there have been um, articles with three eggs, an egg and an egg and an egg. Um, I can't imagine that the bird would survive that, you know. Because, yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah, you know, um, so, and, and sometimes eggs can get impacted, and there's not a heck of a lot you can do, you know, I mean, other than, you know, comfort the bird or, you know, try to do what you can. Um, there, there are prolapses, um, just like any other mammals. Um, sometimes they can, the, especially with an older bird, when they, the, the egg goes out, some of the intestinal wall actually comes out. Um, that's a bad situation because the tissue is bright red and so the other birds will peck at it and it will get infected. So that's usually a lethal condition. So um, you want to just sort of, you know, keep aware of that. Um, we took our kids, um, a couple weekends ago was, you know, sugaring weekend up in New Hampshire. So we went to a poultry farm and my kids were appalled at the, um, at, at this, the, the, um, the, the state of the chickens. I mean, they were bloody, their butts were bloody. Your chickens' butts should never be bloody. I mean, there's no reason for them to be bloody. Um, you know, they were pecked, they were bloody, they were, you know, had scabs on them. It was, you know. Is that too close to the living arrangement? Um, I, I don't think so, because they had lots of pens, but I mean, I, I mean, I was just there for the one day, and a lot of, I mean, they seemed to have, they had a lot of birds. I mean, it could be, I mean, if your chickens are pecking, one of the first things you should consider is stress. And if you have too many chickens in one area, that's they're going to fight, and they're gonna, just like just like I do with my kids, you know, and get away from me. Um, so so it could be stress. It could be um, that they've got some roosters in there that are you know bullying. It could be that they've got some females in there that are bullying. You know, there's there's a couple things, but but your your chickens should never be bloody. You know, so if you have, if one of your chickens is injured or pecked, or you know, you need to do a little bit of follow through and figure out what's going on. You know, um, 
I have a friend whose chicken, one second, you've got a lot of questions, <laughs> that's good. Um, I have a friend who, um, who's, who had one chicken that was continually being um, pecked at and, you know, bareback, bloody and everything. So for the entire winter, she kept this chicken in her basement. <laughs> Oh, you know, okay. people do that. Yes, another question. Um, one of our neighbor's chickens, her name was Brownie. I saw like two or one eggs. You saw, you saw, you saw the yeah, egg actually being laid. Out. Excellent. That's very cool. Um, my husband still hasn't seen any of our chickens lay eggs, so good for you. All right, so um, I have some resources here. Um, that I wanted to share. I'll pass them around. Um, if, <laughs> if you are a journalist who is doing research on chickens because you're writing about it, you're going to go out and buy every book on the subject. Don't. You don't. I just told you everything you need to know about chickens. <laughs> you honestly don't. Don't waste your money. I already did. Yes. Um, you didn't talk about cleaning the feathers like in a sand or oh, glass. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was interested in what you use for that. How do I clean they, I have never given a chicken a bath. No, no. me in the dust the the of the sand. Yeah, they, it's a it's a dirt bath a dirt bath. Yeah. That, they do that yeah. themselves. <laughs> um, and the first time that because mm -hmm. Not only did they roll around in the dirt, but they sort of contort their bodies. Mm -hmm. and, and the first time they did this, and they do it in the sun, because it's a way to, to cool off their feathers, it's a way to clean their feathers. Um, my kids kept running, I was doing some laundry on the second floor, they kept running upstairs, Mom, one of the chickens is dead. So I go downstairs, and, you know, and you, you see this bird, this, lying in the dirt. Um, and she wasn't dead. She was, you know, and this went on about three times. And I said, you know what, let me just sort of look up with, oh, there, you know, this is normal. I guess my concern is that um, where are my poops going to be? For years there were pine trees and the pine trees are now gone. Yeah. So I'm raking pine needles out of there so that, you know, some weeds and grass can grow up through. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, is it a problem that the soil will be so acid? No. No. No, no not at all. Not at all. No, they'll... Um, They'll roll in anything. I mean, it's got to be dry. But no, 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 no. I mean, chickens live in the woods. So, you know, it's, you know, and, and actually, well, no, I mean, I was going to say, you know, leaving, leaving the pine needles there is kind of a good mulch, and things will grow underneath, and bugs and that kind of stuff, which they love. They love bugs. Um, but um, I don't think you're going to be growing too much grass if your yard is like our yard with the pine trees. You know? um, there's two things. One thing is that chickens love ticks. They're great at getting ticks. Since we've gotten our chickens, our three dogs have not had any ticks. My, my son has had ticks, but my, my the three dogs have not had ticks. So, so um, if that's a concern, and guinea hens also are supposed to be fabulous. The thing with guinea hens, though, is they're really loud and they have a call that's similar. It's more like a turkey, you know, like, and um, they're freaky. They're just, they're just so weird. But people love guinea hens. Um, and guinea hens are really good tick eaters. So if ticks are a concern, to have a, a chicken or two in your yard is one of the best things you can do. And I just wrote an article about Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, what I did is I put a call out to, um, to see how many of my, my local friends um, have had Lyme disease or have had people in their family with Lyme disease. Dozens and dozens of people said that, that they had had it. So I mean, it, it is round. Mm -hmm. I, I would get chickens just to, you know, for the tick thing alone. Um, here, when you get chickens, people start giving you chicken stuff. <laughs> um, these are just some of the different breeds. Um, let me see. All right, so that's standard. I mean, um, I'm not quite sure why she's got the, the dark chicks like that, but, but this is, you know, the kind of the standard, the one that, that everybody, you know, thinks of. This isn't the one that, let me see. Oh, these are just, these aren't the good green ones. Oh, this is a Plymouth Rock. I want to get one this oh, summer. Nice. Yeah, isn't that nice? Um, here, I'll pass these around, but this isn't the one. I know I have another one. Okay, okay. 
So these are these are the exotic chicks. Wow. This was the year before that calendar. Um, and I we have some of these exotic chicks. These are the silkies. You've heard people talk about oh, yeah. silkies. Oh. They look like the little oh. fluff balls. Um, this is a this is a Polish hen, and I'm on the lookout for a Polish hen. Um, I've tried, I came really close to getting a blue Polish hen. This is a black one. Um, I was going to get a blue one, and then it turned out there was an infection in the flock, and so I didn't want to bring one. I didn't want to take the chance. Um, oh, this, um, the, the little one, this is the Milfleur, um, that Courier and Ives, this is what, what, um, Courier Yeah. <laughs> um, Courier was the rooster, and Ives is the one that we lost this winter, and I'm not quite sure, I mean, um, by the time we got our body, it was frozen solid. Um, and I used to be a clinical microbiologist, and I would have done an autopsy because um, I would have loved to have seen if maybe there was an impacted egg, or you know, not that I'm cruel or anything, but um, I, you know, um, but we never found out. It could have been that she was just so small, you know. Yeah. With a chicken that might have one. Yeah, I have one that. They don't live very long. They, if, if she's got an impacted egg, she's going to be... Can you feel it? No. 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 There's, there's not much you can do except that make her comfortable and make sure she has access to food and water. Um, this is, this is, we, have, we have one like this. Um, her name is Isabel. Okay. This is a, a spring hen, I think. Um, and, and it looks like they, they have golden spring hens too, which are sort of, um, they've got the black outlines with sort of um, brown feathers. Um, my kids call this the coloring book chicken because it looks like it should be colored in. I already used them, and I moved the water dish one time because it was in the sun. So I moved it about six feet and they almost uh, died of thirst. I yeah, think they could, because they can't find it. <laughs> I've also heard of I've, I've heard of turkeys that are, they get on top of something, they fly up to something, and then they can't figure out how to get down. Wow. So, yeah. How do they live out in the wild? Well, no, 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 those are wild turkeys. I'm talking about domesticating a totally different breed. Because you know that Ben Franklin wanted the turkey to be yes. the, the national yes. bird. And now, I mean, look at that. Yeah. the best time to bring that around again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, you look at these things and it's like, what? You know? Um, all right, when you, have, when you have chickens also, your kids start making you Christmas presents that have chickens on them. Um, what are some of the other? Oh, you know, so don't buy any of those books. However, there's a magazine called Backyard Poultry, which is probably worth investing in. They don't have it in the library. Um, they, ha they have it at the feed stores. I'll pass around some of these. That, um, this one I, I really enjoy. It's got all kinds of stuff. It's, it's, it's for people that really care about their chickens. They, you know, but I mean, they, they raise them for, for meat as well as eggs. And this is in one of these um, backyard poultries. That's where I read about Tiffany the chicken. Um, and actually, what's this one? Um, yeah, this is my article that was in the backyard poultry. Oh, awesome. And actually, I think I had copies of it that you can have. So um, the article that I got in there, this is when I really started writing about it. Um, yeah, I got these these chickens to be thrifty, right? Um, so we got the chickens. You know, we we um, raised them, we took care of them, we fed them. We had the chicken house built. No eggs. No eggs. No eggs. No eggs. So then we went to a chicken swap, and we got Zelda because we knew Zelda was two years old. And the, the owner told us that Zelda was a egg-laying machine. So we said, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not above cheating. You know, my readers want an egg, I'm going to give them an egg. Um, Zelda wouldn't lay an egg. Because sometimes when you, when you move the animal, they go into a little bit of a shock, and they have to reset their system. So we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Finally, on Thanksgiving Day, we got the first egg. So, you know, what do you do with this first egg? So what I did is I went to our spreadsheet and I tallied up everything we had spent on these chickens. And I put this egg on eBay for $700. <laughs> it was 
$729.94. I called it the thrifty $729.94 egg. And I mean, it was a joke, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, um, and so, so it ran on eBay and, and just, you know, a lot of people had a good time with that. Um, of course, nobody, nobody bid on it, which is fine. Um, because I wasn't expecting anybody to. But um, then what do you do with an egg that doesn't sell on eBay? Um, so I had myself a $729.94 omelet. <laughs> so so these, are, these are copies of the article if you'd like to take one. <laughs> and then, uh, all right, so, so that's when I sort of got, in, you know, I thought, you know, these chickens can be more than just chickens, and I can use them as learning opportunities for my children. So um, last summer, and some of you may have read this story in the newspaper, and now you're going to know it was one of my chickens. Um, last, huh? Oh, last summer um, the kids were bored, and so what do kids do now when they're bored? They go and they watch TV on a beautiful summer afternoon. So I said, oh, for God's sakes, find something to do. For you know, do something with the chickens. You know, paint with the chickens. You know, do anything. So they said, paint with the chickens. Well, that's a good idea. So, so we went to the craft store, we got some paint, and we got some canvas, and we got Simon, who again is one of the, the more tame ones, she's, she's just so sweet, she's the nicest little chicken. Um, so we got her, and we painted with her, and we, we did this painting, and, um, and then I decided to, to put it on eBay also to raise money for a local playground. And so it, it went on eBay, and actually it got bid up to $500 for this chicken wow. painting. But then the, the people that bid were, um, it was a fraudulent account. Somebody in Canada was trying to show people how stupid Americans were. And so they didn't, they didn't pay. So then the local radio station did an online, uh, uh, in a real-time auction with a chicken painting. And so we ended up getting a little over $300 for the playground from this chicken painting. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's our chicken. That's Simon. And then uh, last year, what I decided to do also, because we had all these baby chicks, um, I contacted, um, you know, as a writer, I, I, I know some people. Um, so I contacted some of my friends who are authors. And I said, I'll tell you what, if you do an interview with me, you know, a six question interview, not a big deal, I will name one of my chickens after you. Hmm. And so, um, you know, pretty much everyone, everyone that I contacted um, said, this is great, this is great. So we have a Chris Bajalian chicken. We have a, a Jody, this is why I brought this, Jody Pico chicken. <laughs> and I just, actually I just emailed her today to tell her, because I, I, up on my blog I put um, a post with her chicken posing in front of this, this is her uh. this book. Um, and so she really liked that. Um, we have a Med Cabot chicken. We have a Judy Bloom chicken. Judy Bloom! <laughs> oh, and you had the uh, Vera Beats book. We, you know A. S. Amy Kidd? I love that book. Isn't that a fact? She just, um, she just got the, um, the, the uh, advanced reader's copy of her next book, so I will be out soon. Please ignore Vera Dietz. Yeah. One of the most inventive books I've read in a really long time. I'm going to tell her you said that. Oh, love that. So we have an A.S. King. Uh, she, her name is Amy King, but she goes by uh, A.S. King. We have her um, as a chicken. Um, and actually, she's going to be on a book tour uh, in, in, I think, this, this, this summer to fall. And she's making a point of stopping at our house to see our chickens because she's heard so much about them. Um, and then. I just, I mean, I just do a lot of, here's, here's some more news articles with our chickens, and, and, oh, here's, a, here's another news article. So, um, and then the other thing is you get, you get, you know, chicken paraphernalia. I mean, you know, don't, if you get chickens, people will never be at a loss of right. gifts to give you for Christmas for the rest of your life. So, it's kind of fun. Um, and then, oh, I know I wanted to bring this, to clean the eggs. These, you, do you have a dollar store up here? Do you guys have any? Yeah. yeah, this is a dollar. You know, these are those really, really cheap sponges that are useless. They're great for eggs. So, so when you're cleaning your eggs, you don't need soap. You just need warm water. You put the eggs in the warm water, take them out one at a time, and just scrub them gently. Any questions? Yes. More of a comment. Speaking of exotic, I was reading somewhere where a woman was crossing uh, silkies with naked necks. Oh, oh no! Those are called showgirls. Showgirls, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ugly. Yeah, she can't, she can't, well, she can't sell them fast enough. Oh yeah. 
Um, I actually, because I, I saw, I've seen those. Uh, silkies are those, those, those fluffy ones, the really soft looking ones. Mm -hmm. And if you cross them with the naked neck, what they do is they have this long naked neck and then they have sort of like a boa. And so they're called showgirls. Uh, they're kind of ugly. Uh, some people, you know, it's kind of like those, those weird little dogs. You have to like them where you tell them. Um, but, but my concern was to have that much exposed skin in New Hampshire, you know, because the winters are pretty cold. But, but the, the breeder that I talked to said that, that they're very hardy birds. And so it's, but yeah, yeah, there are those. People do some kind of weird things with chickens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you load them up with food and water? No. No, because we lock them in at night. So you have to get a chicken sitter. Or you and your husband go on separate vacations, yeah. um, which is I, with six kids. I mean, usually that's what we do anyway. Because I mean, you know, so I, you know, either my husband or I are always home. Um, but you're going to have to find somebody who can sit for the chickens. But you know, I mean, it's what is chicken sitting? You know, you open the door in the morning. You make sure they have food and water. You close. You know, at night. You don't have to gather the chickens when, when it's dusk, they'll go inside by themselves. So all you have to do is shut the door. You know? So they're very, I mean, again, that's instinctive. Yeah? Why do chickens stop laying eggs? Yeah. <laughs> um, just age. I mean, after a while, their body just um, doesn't have the, the minerals and the nutrients to make eggs anymore. They kind of wear out. Just kind of like, like people. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anybody's been to Key West, but there's a huge chicken population that uh, are protected by the uh, laws of uh, Key West that you have to stop if you're driving down the main street and there's chickens, but you have to stop. Um, Meg Cabot actually lives in Key West and she was talking about that. It's incredible. She, it's incredible. At night, they're in the, you don't want to walk into the trees at night. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they're almost like, but Meg, Meg actually told me a story of where her um, husband went into the post office, and he had a truck and everything. He, it was hot, you know, left the windows down. He came out, and there was an egg on his seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I guess. It's incredible. Supposedly, they are from... Like when they built the railroad through there back in their early wow. I don't they're very tolerant of chickens. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Wow. So uh, yeah, and all the place. You know, a lot of people a lot of people actually like the sound of chickens. Um, female chickens don't make a lot of noise. They are gonna cluck. Occasionally they'll they'll cluck very loudly when they're laying an egg. Well who wouldn't? <laughs> you know, um, but they're they just um, they don't make a lot of noise. It's a very sort of gentle, you know, once in a while there's a squawk. Um, roosters do make noise, um, so I don't know what the laws are. Um, you need to check with town hall. I, I assume up here um, there's no problem with having chickens. So we run these Really? Yeah. We run around on the sidewalks. Um, in Merrimack, I call town hall. I call town hall after the fact. Um, again, it could have been a very short book. Um, and they said in Merrimack that you're allowed to have any farm animal you want. Um, you can have a cow, you can have a pig, you can have chickens. My kids were really excited to hear this. <laughs> no, we're just going to do the chickens. Um, in Nashua, which is south to us, uh, according to the town ordinances, you have to have five acres of land to wow. have any chickens. I don't know anybody in Nashua yeah. that owns five acres of land. I don't know anyone in Merriman, you know. That's a lot of land. So essentially what they did is they worked around the fact that they don't want people to have chickens. So they made this stipulation. I, I think they're going to be changing it because a lot of people, are, they want chickens. <coughs> you know, in this economy, um, to have your own safe food supply is, is worth the investment. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when, they, when they had that, that egg recall, was it last summer with the salmonella? Mm -hmm. Now, again, as a, as a clinical microbiologist, the salmonella was not inside the egg. The salmonella was on the outside of the egg. Um, and salmonella is, to some degree, is considered normal flora in a chicken's gut. Um, 
And if you, you and I, I've talked to some people that grew up with chickens, and they said, you know, I don't know what the big fuss is. You know, everybody knows that you know you wash the eggs and you wash your hands. You know, and you cook. You know, you don't have raw eggs. There's no crust. I mean, she grew up, you know, in in the Midwest with chickens, and you just use common sense. Mm -hmm. But instead of using common sense, they recalled billions of these eggs. Mm -hmm. And think of all that lost food, mm -hmm. that lost effort, you know, for these chickens. It's just, it was such a shame. I mean, they, they could have fed so many people, but instead, you know, they just, they trashed all these eggs. Um, you know, there, there could be salmonella in my flock. Again, it's considered normal flora. You know, they can't, if it's, just like if you have yeast, like you have, everybody has yeast in their, in their gut right now. If there's an overgrowth, you'll get sick. If there's an overgrowth of salmonella, the bird will get sick. But if there's not an overgrowth, it is there, you know. So, you know, I was reading all these things about, you know, they, ooh, they found salmonella in the chicken poop. Well, you know, that's kind of where it belongs. Yeah. You know, or they found it on the bottom of his shoe. Well, if he was out in the hen house, it's going to be there, yeah. I was in the Virginia last fall, uh, September, and uh, the people that I was staying with had been out to the grocery store and they had bought some eggs. It was during this time when we were telling Annie about the salmonella. And she showed, she, the woman said to me, come look at these eggs. And I went over and I looked at them. And when she opened up the, the egg carton, from New Hampshire, from New Hampshire, on each egg was stamped. Oh, yeah, yeah. So New so Hampshire wasn't the problem. Well, they didn't recall anything oh. from New Hampshire. So everybody was buying New Hampshire eggs. Oh, oh, yeah. Who in New Hampshire is doing that? I don't, I don't know. know. I smart. think somebody in Florida had a hard <laughs> 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 yeah. Making a lot of money with that yeah. one. Uh, did somebody have a question? Um, so, you know, the thing is, if you have, a, you can you can make a, like almost like a doghouse size hen house for, a, you know, two or three chickens. And you can have fresh eggs every day for breakfast. You know, with very little care. Um, and writers, um, I don't know if any of you are writers, but writers love chickens because they're very calming, um, they're friendly, and um, almost every writer that I know that owns chickens names them, you know, knows their personality. Um, one second, okay, I, I see it. Um, chickens, that's another thing too, is I thought chickens were chickens. And they each have their own little personality. They're, they're intelligent. Mm -hmm. They're so, I mean, we have some of the sweetest little chickens in the world. You know, they're playful, they're funny, they come when you call them. Yeah. You know, um, they're excited to see you. As, you know, if, if I'm in the yard and they're in the, you know, in the enclosed area, they'll all rush over to the side of the fence and start, you know, start mocking away, oh, sort of, because yes. they, want, they want to get my attention. Yeah. Do you rotate your yards? Do you have to rotate? We don't, only because we have only one fenced in area, but we're trying to figure out because that, that's good. Um, and I forgot about you, you're next. <laughs> oh, wait, one second, let me finish this and then you're next. Um, they will, our, our dog area, um, before we got chickens, we had to mow it. There was that much grass, and now it's barren. Um, mm -hmm. They'll eat every little last mm -hmm. bit. So I've seen, um, in some of these magazines, I've seen things where They've actually like netted off half of the area so that at least some grass can grow or something. And then they keep them over on that side and then they net this area to sort of rotate. Um, there's another thing, um, there's a tractor hen coop thing where it's a hen house with the enclosed in area and it's on wheels so that you can move it to a different section, you know. Um, it seems a little fancy, but you know, if you want to do that, that's fine. Okay, yeah, your turn. What if our neighbors had a rooster, but they got rid of it because someone wanted a rooster? Oh, did you hear the rooster? Yeah, um, we've been like, he's, his name was Darky. Darky. <laughs> People have very inventive Darky. names with chickens. <laughs> Darky, yeah. Did. And he kept on, he's like, kept on guarding. Guarding, yeah. Well, oh, that's what they do. And they chase, they chase people sometimes. Um, we, oh, one second. We have three dogs. Um, we have three, um, they're not even dogs. I mean, let's be serious. They're Maltese. Um, <laughs> they're just animated bedroom slippers. Um, they, um, when the chickens were little, they used to boss the chickens around, but then the chickens grew bigger than the, bird, than the dogs, mm -hmm. and so um, now, you know, they peck the little black nose because that's their white dogs, and so there's little in the end. So the, the, our dogs are actually afraid of the chickens now, so they don't.
So that's not an option. We don't have any cats. Um, who had the question? Yes. I have like, free range in my grass. You do? And so they could take grass. Um, I have a half an acre, a quarter, a half an acre. And they free range and my dogs follow them around and chase off anything that might be. Oh, see, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, have, you, have, have you lost any, any birds? Not from partridges. Wow. Cats, my dog, Kate. Um, I, I know of another um, situation where they, they free range in the backyard and they the, there's bushes where the, the yeah. hens can run under yeah. and there's also like a fence with a tunnel that they can mm -hmm. go into safety. Yeah. Um, and again, because I'm writing about my chickens, I had to sort of make sure they were a little more secure. But yeah. you know, some people free range you know completely, which is which time they're in the they stay in the camp. But yeah, they yeah, they don't like walking on snow. No. Chickens I want I call her my barn bird because she comes into my barn. Um, she walks through the snow, into the barn, and stays there all day, and goes back out. Really? The day. Um, my friend Tom, who, yeah. who built the uh, hen houses, um, he, he, he built the hen houses, right? Mm -hmm. But um, he got a little lazy because his chickens would like to hang out in the horse barn. Mm -hmm. And so he figured they were safe and everything, so he would let them do that, and they were slaughtered by a raccoon. Yeah. Oh. If you've ever seen a grown oh. fireman cry, yeah. it was, I mean, he, he was devastated. Right. Absolutely devastated. Oh, I have never seen a raccoon. Yeah. Raccoons will do, um, and weasels also. Um, they'll they'll do a massacre because they don't just eat one and then eat it and, and then leave. They'll they'll pull your whole flock at night. And I I had a dog get not my dog. Yeah. Um. Two things that first of all, birds are flock animals. Mm -hmm. So they're going to, to stay in your yard. They're mm -hmm. not going to go, like one go off here and there. They're going to stay together. Um, if you bring a new bird into your flock, you have to keep them penned in for at least two weeks straight so that they understand that this is their new home. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise they're going to go off in search of their home because they're mm -hmm. looking for their flock. Um, and just another thing is, um, in southern New Hampshire, in I think it was in Amherst, next town over from us, there was a woman um, and the reporter actually called me to, to see what I thought about this. She had had something get into her barn and gouged all of her rabbit's eyes out. So that doesn't sound like an animal to me. And then she came home and all of her chickens were, um, they were dead and they were piled up in, in a pile outside of her barn window. And so, so she called the police and she said, somebody's killing my animals. Yeah. And so the police called uh, New Hampshire Game and Wildlife and they came down and they said, no, this is classic weasel behavior. Oh. And, and so, so the reporter you know, contacted wow. me and said, you know, have you ever heard of this? Do you think it's classic? And I said, I don't know of any animal. First of all, if the birds are attacked, they're going to attack the attacker. So, I mean, that's why if a raccoon gets into your flock, you are going to have feathers all over the place. You're going to have a massacre. There's going to be blood. There's going to be, they might kill all of them, but not without a fight. Right. You know? So I can't imagine any kind of an animal other than that kid up the street um, who, who, could, who could silently kill these birds very neatly and then line them up. But the police closed the case because they said that, you know, the fishing game said that it was, that it was a, an animal like that. So, wow. Two-footed weasel, exactly, exactly. Wendy, we're going to have to wrap it up. Okay, no, I'm. But this has been great. Okay. Well, thank you. I love that poster out front. Can I get oh, a copy of that? Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, oh, oh I had that. Um,